Hey everyone, it's that time of the year again when I reveal my favorite car of the last 12 months as part of the annual Auto Trader New Car Awards, which have just been announced. Now, in case you're not familiar with our awards, they're a little different to the norm. Unlike most companies, we don't ask car experts to pick the winners. We ask the people who actually go out and buy these cars, you guys, for your opinion. Because no one can tell you what a car is truly like like a person who's actually gone out and bought one. Except there's one award where we don't ask your opinion. It's the Rory Reid Award, and only one person is qualified to pick that, me. So that's what this video is all about, choosing my favorite car of the last 12 months. Before we get to the overall winner though, let me give you a list of cars that I've really enjoyed over the last year, starting with the Honda Civic eHev. We ran this car for a few months as a long-termer and I was blown away by it. Firstly, it was very good fun to drive and also surprisingly fast. Honda reckon it'll do 0 to 62 in 8.1 seconds, but it's way quicker, 6.8. That's hot hatch territory. And it's also frugal. At times, I managed up to 80 miles per gallon in this car. So it's a proper champion when it comes to fuel economy while still being fun to drive. Next up, we have the BMW i7, a luxury electric saloon that takes comfort and performance to new levels. Now, this thing has a very spacious interior and some seriously advanced technology. There's a little screen down by your doors in the back that let you control an even bigger 31 inch 8K widescreen display that folds down from the ceiling. This thing runs Amazon Fire TV so you can enjoy Netflix, Prime Video and more while you're being driven around. It's so good. And the car is also fast and fun to drive. BMW knocked it out of the park with this one. Okay, Tesla Model Y, another one that I like. I didn't at first though. When I reviewed this car originally, I complained about the fact that the suspension was way too firm. Some of you disagreed in the comments, thank you. But guess who didn't disagree? Tesla. They softened up the suspension to the point where this is now actually a very drivable car in my eyes. So drivable that I actually went out and bought one because they've fixed the problem while keeping the rest of what is actually a brilliant car. Yeah, I'm one of those people now, but I'm okay with it because the car is actually very good. Okay, the next one is a car I didn't expect to like very much, but did. Mercedes-Benz have really stepped up their game with the EQS SUV. This thing delivers on quite a few levels, opulence, elegance, and very good range but it's also, honestly, one of the quietest cars I've ever driven in. So it feels so luxurious and it's full of decent technology as well, making it a strong contender if you're looking for an extremely plush electric SUV. Another one I loved was the Maserati MC20. Stunning piece of Italian design, this one, with a glorious V6 engine, which is kind of all you need in a supercar, but it's also very engaging to drive and I love the fact that you've really got to be on your toes to handle it almost at all times. But honestly, it's a car that when you look at it and get inside and fire it up, it just gets under your skin. Last but not least in my list of contenders was the iconic Lamborghini Countach. This thing made an unexpected comeback, capturing the hearts of Lambo enthusiasts all over again. And okay, they're only making 112, so I was super lucky to even get to sit inside let alone drive one of these things. It was a real privilege. Underneath though, is basically a Lambo Sian, but that's no bad thing. 800 plus horsepower, super responsive, super loud, super beautiful to look at, and occasionally quite terrifying to drive, which is exactly what you want in a Lambo. Future classic, this one. Okay, now the moment you've all been waiting for, here are my top three, my absolute favorite cars from the last year, selected from a rich pool of contenders. Thank you, by the way, to everyone who voted on our community page about which one of these three cars they thought that I would pick as my overall winner. Nearly 30,000 of you voted and reading the comments, I think some of you might know me very well. Some of you are also huge conspiracy theorists and some of you completely disagree with me and think I should have picked totally different cars. But hey, it's my shortlist, so here goes. First of all, we have the Hyundai Ioniq 6. Yes, I'm calling it Hyundai, not Hyundai. I love the fact this car even exists. In a world where most manufacturers are churning out derivative designs, Hyundai have stuck two fingers up at the rest of the industry and created a brave piece of design that really stands out. Ask yourself, 
Who else is making cars inspired by streamliners? Who else is willing to risk people turning their noses up at their car because it's not an SUV? And it's not just the car that trades on looks either. It drives well, it's comfortable, it's quick, it's quiet, got a good range, and the technology is not bad too. I'd recommend this car in a heartbeat. Next up, and this is very different, it's the stunning Ferrari Pura Sangue. When I first heard Ferrari were making an SUV, I, like many people, had my doubts about why they should bother and about whether it would be any good. If any company shouldn't be making an SUV, it's one that's best known for making sports cars and, and amazing motorsports vehicles. But they delivered. My God, they delivered. The Pura Sangue looks the absolute nuts, goes like the clappers, and in terms of fun factor, drives better than any other SUV I've driven. You can drift the thing for goodness sake. And it sounds phenomenal with that naturally aspirated V12 engine. Yeah, it's not the most practical thing, but if you want a car that can move four people and a bit of luggage in style, and one that sounds good as well, they've knocked it out of the park. Just don't ask how expensive it is. Okay, last but certainly not least, because this car is the winner of the Auto Trader New Car Awards, Rory Reed Award 2023. Most of you guessed it. It's the Porsche 911 GT3 RS. This car is a track focused masterpiece, still road legal, but it delivers performance on a par with dedicated race cars, razor sharp handling, perfect balance, exhilarating speed, and a noise that sends shivers down your spine. What I love the most is that the GT3 RS doesn't focus on delivering big power, it doesn't need to. Instead, it focuses on making the driving experience more fun and more involving and allowing you to grow as a driver. It's got this fully adjustable suspension that, get this, lets you change the way the suspension behaves in very complex ways and almost on a corner by corner basis. And you can do it all without a spanner. You do it from the touchscreen, which allows you to really learn about the car, but also about how your driving is affected by the myriad ways that a sports car can be set up. To my knowledge, no one has ever really approached this in quite the same way that Porsche has, and the experience is breathtaking. This is a car that reminds me why I love my job. I haven't driven many cars in my life that make me react quite like this. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it was good fun. Right, there you have it folks, the Auto Trader New Car Awards. All the winners from all the categories can be found in the link down below. Thank you to everyone who took part and thanks for watching this video to dissect the shortlist and discuss the winner of the Me Award, the Rory Reed Award. Let me know what your favorite car has been over the last 12 months. Maybe you agree with me, maybe you don't, but either way, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you again for more great content. Peace.